everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and today we're going to be talking about the current version of SPCC, where Curve Explorer and Filter Manager went, as well as the previous version of SPCC. We're going to be going over building custom filters, as well as downloading a database full of filters that we can use. And I'm going to show you how to make that database the default filter database for SPCC in both versions, so you don't have to keep doing the steps every time you hop back in the Pixin site. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's head on over and learn about custom filters with SPCC. If you've updated to Pixin site version 1.8.9-2, there's a change that'll jump out at you pretty quickly. And that change is going to be with spectrophotometric color calibration. You'll notice that Curve Explorer and Filter Manager are gone. But what happened to them? If you go into Process All Processes, you'll notice that Filter Manager is now a process of its own. And this is because any process that utilizes filter curves can now tap into the Filter Manager database and utilize the information that it has. And if you're still using an older version of PixInsight where Curve Explorer and Filter Manager are part of SPCC, don't worry. This video has something for you too. So don't click away. Now, if you notice, I have a lot more filters than what comes with the default SPCC filter database. And I'm going to show you how to get that. And I'm going to show you how to create filters of your own. But first, I want to make sure to give credit where credit is due. Jason Kuhn did an amazing job creating this filter database, and he also makes it available to us as a downloadable link that he has on the video where he goes over this. So I'm going to have a link to the database in the description of this video, as well as a link to his video, which I highly encourage you to watch, where he actually tells us how he created these filters, goes into filter curves, and also explains how to create filters of your own. So I want to make sure to give a big shout out to Jason Kuhn. Make sure to check out his video. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is click on the link for the filter database, and that's going to bring us to this page here. What we're going to do is click download. And then depending on your system, you'll have your downloads box pop up in the top right corner, and that'll look something like this. Once you see the PixInsight SPCC custom filters file downloaded, what I recommend doing is click on this folder, and it'll bring you right to where your computer saved it. Right click, copy, and then what I did is I actually created a separate folder SPCC filters, and then I pasted the zip file within that folder. Make sure that you right click and extract all. This will come into play in just a moment. Once you have that completed and you see the zip file along with the unzipped file, we're going to go back into PixInsight. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to task. Now, if you're using the older version of PixInsight where the uh, Curve Explorer and Filter Manager are part of SPCC, stand by. We're going to get into that in just a moment. Now, under task, we want to go to um, merge CSV filter uh, definitions. And what that's going to do is if we look down and we look at merge CSV filter definitions, this scans the specified input directory for valid filter definitions in CSV format and merges them with existing ones. New filters will be added and already existing ones will be updated with imported data. So we want to do merge so the new filters get put into this list right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little folder. We're going to navigate to where we saved our filter database. Now, if you did not extract the zipped file, your folder will be empty. If you did extract the zip folder, then we'll see the PixInsight SPCC custom filters. 
we'll highlight the folder and click select folder. Now, once we're done here, we'll just go ahead and hit the circle. Now, I already have these downloaded, so I'm not gonna do it again, but once you click the circle, you'll see your little um, action window and all of those filters will be downloaded. And then they'll be ready for use with SPCC. Now, what I want to do is show you how to create filters of your own. So we're gonna go into Curve Explorer within the filter manager process. This window should look familiar if you've seen my SPCC video. Now, I've actually already created the Optolong L Quad Enhanced Filter. So I'm gonna show you how to create the Antlia Quad Band Filter. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna find the Antlia Quad Band, and this can be any filter that you wanna do. I'm just gonna demonstrate a very popular filter now, which is the Antlia Quad Band. So we're gonna click the Antlia Quad Band and you'll see the curve information here. This is gonna be just like what I showed you in SPCC, only we're actually gonna create the filters. Now, if you're using a Sony CMOS with a uh, UV IR cut filter, we're gonna to scroll to the Sony Color Sensor UV IR cut. Since we already have the Antlia quad band filter selected, we're gonna hold control and we're gonna click the Sony color sensor, the blue UV IR cut. And again, this is gonna be whatever sensor that you have and whatever filter that you wanna create, uh, the concept will be the same. We'll see here the Sony um, blue sensor information along with the quad band filter information. We're gonna go down to these little squares and we're gonna click and now it wants us to name our filter. I'm gonna keep with the theme that the Sony CMOS sensor has with the different filters. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type in Sony CMOS. Right now we're on blue. So I'm gonna type in B dash UV IR cut forward slash Antlia quad band. I'm gonna go ahead and actually copy that. This is gonna be for the blue channel and then we're gonna hit okay. Now what we're gonna do is go back up to the top, click on the Antlia quad band and then we're gonna come down and we're gonna go back to the Sony color sensor, only this time hold control and we're gonna choose green. Click the little squares. I'm gonna paste the information in that I just copied so I don't have to keep retyping. I'm gonna change the B to a G for green. Filter channel is green, so we're gonna put in a G, hit okay. And then the last one, Antlia Quad Band. We're gonna come down to the Sony color sensors and hold control and we're gonna choose red. Hit the little squares. I'm gonna paste my information in, change the B to R for red and then filter channel red. And then we're gonna hit okay. And as you see, as we went through these, our different color channels are now fitted with the Antlia quad band. And this will be the same for any filter that you do. Once we're done with our three channels, we're gonna hit okay. And it's gonna say some combined filters have been defined. Save them. And yes, we absolutely wanna save these. So we're gonna hit yes. And then we're done. When we look in our database now, we have the Antlia quad band filter information. And that'll be for each and every channel that we have.
red, green, and blue. Now, from there, there's nothing left to do. The filter manager automatically saves the information so we do not have to go back. You can shut down PixInsight and bring it back up and your filters will always be there. That's not the same though for the older version. So let me show you the older version. Now, let's work with an older version of PixInsight where Curves Explorer and filter management is all part of SPCC still. Now, as you can see, we still have our default filter database. And I'm gonna show you the steps again with this version so you don't have to bounce back and forth within this video to get the information. We're gonna to go to filter management, make sure that import CSV filter definitions and merge with current filters is selected. We're gonna click on this little folder icon and we're gonna to navigate to the folder that we saved our downloaded filter database to. We'll go ahead and select our filter database and click on select folder. We'll see our filter database populate and we're gonna hit okay. Now once this downloads, we'll have all of our new filters available to us. From here, we can create custom filters. We'll go to Curve Explorer, and I'll go ahead and demonstrate the Antlia Quad Band filter again. So I'll choose the Antlia Quad Band, and come down to the Sony Color Sensors, hold Control, and I'll start with the blue sensor. And again, you can create whichever filters that you want. I'm just gonna use these as an example. We'll click the little boxes, I'll save you from having to watch me type again. Since we're working with the blue channel right now, I'm going to replace the R with a B for blue. The filter channel is blue, so I'm going to put a B, hit OK. We'll go up to the top, grab the Antlia quad band again, come back down, hold Control, choose the green sensor, hit the boxes, paste in our name. Get rid of the R and put a G for green. Filter channel is green, so we'll put a G, hit OK. And one more time, Antlia quad band. Come back down to the Sony color sensors, hold control, grab our red channel, hit the boxes. And we already have R for red. Filter channel is red. So I'm gonna put an R, hit OK. We'll hit OK. We do wanna save them, so we wanna hit yes. And now we have the Antlia quad band available to us in every channel, red, green, and blue. Now, unlike the new version of Filter Manager, the old version will not automatically save. So every time you exit out of PixInsight, and come back into PixInsight, you're gonna be back to your default filters. So you have to do all of this over again. So in order to prevent that, whether or not you created custom filters, so in other words, if you created or did not create custom filters, you do want to do this so that then you don't have to keep inputting the information every time you come into PixInsight. We'll go into Filter Management, Export XML Filters Database, and we wanna to go to Output File, click the little folder, and we want to create a file name. I'll just put My Filters. And again, this is gonna be whether or not you created custom filters. So if, even if you just downloaded this database, you still want to export like we're doing right now and then create a file name and then hit save. We'll see our file name populate, we'll hit okay. Now, to prevent SPCC from getting rid of what you just did every time you open up PixInsight, you have to define 
a default database that SPCC will pull from every time it opens. And to do that, we're gonna go to the uh, little wrench icon and we're gonna click on the little folder icon and we're gonna select the file that we just created. Hit open. And now our default filter database is the file that we created. Hit OK. And now every time you close out of PixInsight and reopen PixInsight, SPCC is going to default to the database that you just defined. So I hope that you found this useful. And if you did, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Did you learn anything new? Do you have any questions? Have you already created custom filters of your own? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.